Well, hi. We're down here at Main Street Station with Double D Entertainment. Today we're with Saving One Dog or Cat at a Time. What can you tell us about who you guys are and what you do? Hello. Um, we are Saving One Dog or Cat at a Time. What we do, we go to the shelters. We get the animals that are in need, desperate need, of getting out of the shelter before they get euthanized. We, sometimes we foster them and, or find them in their forever homes. Sometimes we also need people to step up and help us foster. But basically what we do is we pair up the animals with the people after we get them out of the shelters. And if someone comes to you guys looking for a specific dog or cat, you guys can help them find them from the shelters? Oh yes, we can. We will bring pictures and it would take as much time as you want to pair you up with the perfect dog or cat. And what, what areas do you guys service? Volusia County, Lake County, and Orange County. And what's the best way to get in touch with you guys? Um, our Facebook page, Saving One Dog or Cat at a Time, or the email address is judyb underscore 1967 at yahoo.com. That was judyb underscore 1967 at yahoo.com. Yes. Cool. Awesome. Thank you, guys. So we're here with Cavalier Rescue of Florida. Can you, t can you tell us your name and what you're doing? Sure. My name is Shelly Renata and I'm a volunteer for Cavalier Rescue of Florida. And Linda over there and Ann um, are helping too. Linda's a volunteer. And we brought our rescue dogs down here so they could meet other people and people could meet them. Excellent. So these are your dogs? And um, these two are Linda's fosters that are up for adoption, but they have a home pending. And her little dog, uh, Duchess, is hiding under the. <laughs> what? Can you tell us what their names are? Sure. This is Sadie. That's Cooper. He's the only male. That's Daisy over there, and that's Duchess. Beautiful. So these two guys here are up for adoption. Do you guys often have rescue dogs that are looking for homes? We do. That's what we do. We find dogs or get them, um, take them into rescue, and then foster them, and then find them homes. That's wonderful. What what areas do you guys service? All of Florida. Don't all of Florida. Florida. Oh, that's There's incredible. People all over. Volunteers all over Florida. That's wonderful. What's the if someone's looking for a dog and wants to help find a forever home with you guys? Then uh, what's the best way to get in touch with Actually, you? But there's a website, the Florida Cavalier Rescue okay. website, cool. with the... pictures of our dogs and where they're located. That's wonderful. Can you tell us what the URL is for that site? Uh, let me see. Hmm. www. Oh. oh, right here. Oh, www.cavrescue fl.com that's cavrescuefl.com so you guys actually have pictures of the animals so we some have animals available for adoption all the time we have an application where people can fill out if they want to adopt a dog a specific dog or just be put on our list for dogs coming in we always have dogs coming in to rescue what's the fees to take home a dog for it adoption depends on the dog it it's um it's pretty variable we if they're older, it's less, maybe $300 up to $500, depending on the dog. Then that isn't really a fee. It covers their vet bills when they're rescued. Most of them have five, six, seven hundred dollars vet bills. So we're all volunteers, so that's, that's essentially what it's for. That's great, and really that's cheaper than getting a dog, too. That's not a rescue, right. all and in all. You know, they're all, they've all been fostered. The temperament's all, you know what you're getting. Um, we do references, we do a home visit, we check with vets, and we be sure that the dog and the adopting person are well matched. Oh, that's best of all. A lot of people don't go that far. No, no. no. It's, I said it's almost like adopting a child. <laughs> that's wonderful, though. These animals need good homes, and that's it's great right. someone's out there. wonderful little dog. Great. Well, thanks for talking with us. Great. All right. See ya. Oh, hey, we can't prepare for that. So we're here with CC's Equine Rescue, and can tell us a little bit about what you guys do? Okay. Um, my name is Mariette. I'm from CC's Equine Rescue in Florida. I mean, in Bernal. <laughs> I have currently 22 horses in my rescue. Um, we do it privately. Um, we have volunteers that come out. There's, we take in neglected, abused, and abandoned horses. 
We work with the sheriff's department. We have people contacting us that when horses are neglected or abandoned, we take them in, we nurse them back to health. We do adopt them out. Um, we go out to the site and see that they won't, this won't happen to them again. We have rehomed probably 45 um, horses. Um, they come to us. We have some of them that's actually not, you know, adoptable because of the arthritis and mentally they just won't be able to adopt back to into into homes again. They just stay back with us. Um, we are available on ccsequinerescue.org if you need to contact us. We are um, on Facebook at CC's Equine Sanctuary. Um, you know, we do accept donations on our website and. Um, we're always looking for volunteers. And if someone wanted to volunteer with you guys, they would just contact you through Facebook or find contact information on your website? Yes. And that was ccsequinerescue.org? Yes, equinerescue.org or on Facebook, CC's Equine Rescue or Sanctuary on Facebook. All right, great. Thank you very much. We're here. What's the, what's the name of your rescue, and what do you guys do? Fields Rescue, Lori Boroski. Great. And where do your where do your animals come from? What's your mission? We rescue animals from shelters that are high kill shelters, and we rescue them and bring them into our no kill shelter and adopt them out of PetSmart and Petco and the adoption stores on the weekends. That's wonderful. I see I see a lot of those animals in PetSmart when I'm in there for my cats. That's me standing there. Standing there with the dogs. That's fantastic. How much is it typically to adopt a pet from you guys? It's a $150 adoption fee, and that comes with their microchip, uh, spay, neuter, all their shots, and on preventatives. That's fantastic. How can someone contact you guys if, you're, if they're looking for a new pet? Uh, they can go on our website at secondchancerescue.org. Great. Well, thank you very much. Well, we're here down at Main Street Station. The clouds are gray, but we're staying as dry as we can. And we're here at Safari Animal Rescue. And can you tell us who you are and what you guys do? I'm Ruth Ruprecht, the president of Safari Rescue. Wonderful. And, and you are? I'm Janice Thompson, and I'm a volunteer. Well, wonderful. And you're with Safari Rescue. What exactly do you guys do? We reach out to the community and give help to senior citizens and veterans. We also are the uh, leader of uh, donors for dogs to the Canine for Warriors. We take in a lot of animals that are medically needy to help them out instead of them getting killed at high kill shelters. That's great. And what areas do you guys service? Excuse me? What, what areas do you guys service mostly? Uh, we do uh, St. John's County, Flagler County, and Volusia County. Great. And who's this little guy here? Or is this a, a lady? It's a boy cat. Yes, Kiana. Hey, Kiana. And what can you tell us about Kiana? He does better than <laughs> I do. He's, he's a Bengal mix that we got out of a kill shelter. He was uh, um, going to be euthanized because he had a very bad eye virus. And um, but that mean, you know, they were just going to kill him. They said, we're not going to put the money into him. We saw him. We really wanted to help him because when an animal shows that they want to live, and they really want help, that's what we do. We go in there and get him. We took him out, took him to our vet. He had his one eye removed, and then it was sad because about 10 days later, the other one got really bad, spent hundreds and hundreds on him, and it just didn't work. And it's a non-profit organization. It's a non-profit organization. You guys have many cats just like just like this little oh, girl we here, have two, or uh, little boy. We have two uh, blind ones at our place. We have a three-legged cat that we've worked with. Um, there's many ones. We've had China the dog that was from uh, Jacksonville. This cage, almost no hair on her. It's emaciated beyond belief. Uh, the animal control contacted us along with the uh, St. John's Regional Veterinarians and they brought her to us. Uh, we got her healthy. They could not believe the difference in her. The hair grew back and she's actually adopted now. That's wonderful. So if someone else out there is looking to adopt an animal through you guys, how would they go about contacting with you? And uh, I imagine you guys are always looking for volunteers too, is that right? Always, always. That's a big part of it. More volunteers, more fosters means more that we can pull from the kill shelters. Wonderful. And how would someone contact you guys? Uh, they could call us at 386-445-6840. We also have um, our email is mysafarinc at gmail.com. That was mysafarinc at gmail.com. Great, and 
And you're on Facebook. On Safari, S-A-F-F-A-R-I. Two Fs. Two Fs, S-A-F-F-A-R-I. Right in. What was that one more time? Save a Furry Friend Animal Rescue Incorporated. That's fantastic. How many animals do you guys have right now? Uh, probably in foster care. We have about 20, 28 cats in foster care. And right now we're just basically down to two other puppies, and we're doing more with our Canine for Warriors, our therapy dogs, and our alert dogs for children. We're doing more training with that. What can you tell me about the Canine for Warriors program? Uh, it's very close to our hearts. It's soldiers that come back with post-traumatic stress disorder, and we donate the dogs totally free of charge to the camp up in Ponte Vedra, and they do the further training. We do basic training with a behavioralist we have, and then they continue on with the training. But there's certain characteristics, size, and everything that we look for. And if there was a serviceman that was back or a servicewoman that was back with post-traumatic stress disorder, how would they go about finding an animal through Canines for Warriors. They would have to contact uh, them up uh, in Ponte Vedra, which they just would have to Google Canine for water, Warriors. Hey. Oh, that's great. She just today. got adopted today. Oh, fantastic. Sweet Pea. Sweet, Sweet Pea, you've got a new home. Sweet Pea, uh, we were looking, we got a Canine for Warrior dog out of the and they were going to be euthanized along with her three sisters in the morning. So we just said throw them on the plane. That's fantastic. So instead of getting euthanized, Sweet Pea's got a new place to go. Yep. She got a new home, a new lease on life. They were really bad. But that's just wonderful. She, she looks wonderful. Yep. Well, guys, now. that really is. This is the most rewarding thing I can ever do in my life. Well, She's good at adoptions. She can find an adopter. She, you're, you're the one. <laughs> she knows it. That's fantastic, though. And it's so good someone's doing it, too, because it, if not, it's just... Exactly. Right. Out for our uh, clinics. We're going to start doing microchipping and uh, microchipping and rabies clinics starting in Flagler County soon. Uh, citizens. That's fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. Well, thank you guys. Thanks so much for having us. Oh, Bye. thanks for being here. Bye. <laughs> thank you. Bye. See ya. All right. Well, we're here. We had just seen Sweet Pea and heard she found her new home. And this is a new mommy. How do you feel finding your new puppy? Excellent. Excellent. Cool. Yeah. And she looks really good, doesn't she? Yeah, she does. She's going to get a great home, huh? Yeah. She's going to be spoiled. <laughs> yeah, she is. Oh, yeah. She'll be spoiled. Awesome. Well, congratulations. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Oh, I'm sure Sweet Pea appreciates it, too. Yeah, she does. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Well, hey, we're still down here at the Main Street Station. Staying dry. The clouds are holding out. And we are here with people from Sophie's Circle. Can you tell us who you are and what you guys do? Uh, we are Sophie's Circle, and we rescue dogs. Awesome. Where do your dogs come from? They come from all over Volusia County. Really? Are they coming out of shelters? Are you guys getting them from homes? Some of them come from shelters. Uh, these two are uh, surrender, owners surrender. Um, you know, it depends on sometimes people find dogs and they call us. They found a dog in the street. It, they come from us from all over the place. Now, how many dogs do you have now? How many dogs do we have, girls? We've about 15 right now. About 15 right now, and they're all up for adoption. And how would, if someone was looking to adopt a dog, how would they contact you? They would go to our website, sophiecircle.org, and all the information is right on there. There's a uh, adoption application, and all the dogs are on there also. So all the dogs are on there to view, and they can apply right online, too. That's fantastic. How much do the adoption fees usually go about? One fifty, and for one hundred fifty dollars, you get the dog is fully vetted. Uh, they are spay or neutered. They're in good health, and they're ready to go. Uh, that's fantastic. How long have you guys been going for? Five years. Five years. Have you grown a lot in those five years? We have rescued many, many dogs in five years. Yes. Yeah. That's wonderful. Are you guys looking for volunteers or anything like that at all? We are always looking for volunteers. We could use fosters. We could use people to transport. We could use anyone who is willing to help us. That's great. And donations, too, I assume you, you accept. And you, you can make donations on your website? Yes, yes. Our PayPal is on our website. Oh, that's great. All right, well, thank you guys for being here. And thank you. I'm just a volunteer. Hang on in. Cool. Well, we're still staying dry down here at the Main Street Station today, and we are here with Critters. Can you tell us who you guys are and what you're doing? I'm Joanne Smurden, president, and uh, bottle washer and all that other good stuff. <laughs> and this is the Brains. Who are you, Mr. Brains? I'm, I'm David Palms. I'm the CEO. Her and I will, are equals. There will never be anybody 
one person in charge of this corporation. It will always be a team effort. And uh, we're after to save as many animals and help as many rescues as we can. And that's our goal, is to create Crittersville to do it. Well, let's take a look at your mock-up here at Critters in just a moment, but if I can, what kind of animals do you guys rescue? And where do you find your, your rescues from? Right now, our rescues are feral cats, and they came out of our backyard, and rabbits, and they've come from uh, three different uh, individuals, abused animals, and a bunch of them came from Flagler's Humane Society. So we are basically, and that's all we were going to be, was a rabbit rescue. But the, uh, there are so many cats in Flagler County and Palm Coast that uh, we started catching them in our backyard as they were babies before they could have more. Because one cat puts out six kitties four times a year. That's a lot of cats. I've seen a couple, like a group of just a few cats explode into a large population of the, the Hemingway cats. In no time. Real fast, and usually they end up with eye infections and all yeah. sorts of problems. Yeah. And, and the, uh, like one of ours is, she got pregnant at four months. Way too young. To, and she had a litter of six. At just four months? At four months. Yeah, we were told they have yeah. to be six months to get fixed, so we waited and she snuck out. She had a escaped, good time. got back. Came back home, knocked up. So we have six. Five of them survived. Only one of them died. Do you still have them, or did you find homes for them? You still have them. <laughs> we have four of them. We adopted one out. One died, and right now we have four. And as soon as uh, she decides to let them up, because she calls them her ninjas, that uh, they, they can find homes. But if they don't, they're at home. Do you have any other other cats right now, or, or many more rabbits? We, we have quite a few rabbits. I'm not going to give you numbers because we're, <laughs> for various reasons, <laughs> but we have more than we sh need. But they need us, and, and if we have come across more that need us, we will have them. And you'll be there for them, and but exactly. but you're looking for new homes for them, right? New homes or sanctuaries. Or sanctuaries. That's what this will be is sanctuaries for cats, dogs, rabbits, horses, any kind of animal that doesn't have a home, it'll have one. Well, let's take a look at what you're planning to build if we can. There we go. So what? This is a catwalk. The cats will have, be able to go all around here. Here, would you like to Okay. And then we want, we don't believe in cages, so we're going. They're going to be able to travel all the way around, and we'll have a nice big sanctuaries, different areas for for the different animals. Here are for rabbits, here are for dogs, and then we'll have the cats here. This will be a safe game room for kids with cam cameras everywhere, cameras through the whole yeah, thing. The whole complex is going to be 24/7 under cameras. Anybody on the internet, that's where we hope to get some of our funding, will join so that they can visit on camera anytime they want. If they fall in love with animals, they can keep an eye on them and make sure we take care of it. That's so, and, and the game room, the uh, visitors from other cities, other states, other countries can go into there and talk to their friends back home. And they can show this is where we are, you know, and it, there'll be cameras all over this place. We'll have a community vegetable garden. You make a donation, you make a donation, and uh, you go pick your own vegetables. Which We need to generate money to keep this all running. That's one of the ways. We'll have uh, local artists here, because we support local artists. We'll have, they'll just pay a little bit of a... Uh... We'll give them the space, what they sell, give us 10% 10, 10 off the top. That's all we have. That's wonderful. It's That's just, totally understandable. The That's church has made a fortune off of 10%. We can do, we can survive on 10%. Absolutely. So they will have an area that they can create whatever they create. But it won't cost them an arm and a leg until they sell something. And we're very and adaptable. It's just a finger that it's going to cost them. We're very adaptable. I go out, talk to people, find out what their needs are. Uh, we're going to have a special needs one. And um, also, we're going to uh, have a low-cost vet clinic, 
in there. 24 hours, seven days a week, it's going to be open. And then. Readersville will be open 24 7. 24 7. That's fantastic. And plus, the cameras would be viewable 24 7 as well. In the case area, like we tried to create here, this will be seven days a week. So the rescues won't have to wait for weekends or whenever or create an event somewhere. They just put their animals in a uh, in their vehicles on a leash or loose. They bring them here. They don't have to set up cages. They don't have to do anything. They just bring the animals here. They showcase it here. Everything inside here will be what they have to tote in their vehicle. And that will save them so much because you talk to them, you find out putting those crates, figuring out where they're going to put them, where they're going to do with them. They're heavy. They're it's going to save them. That's what we're working towards, helping Anything them too. To help the rescues get home for the animals. So it sounds to me like Crittersville. Once it's all together, it's not only going to be a wonderful thing for the community because of the vegetable garden, you'll be able to help the rescues also find adoptions for their animals in the showcase room. You'll also be able to have it in the game room, a, a great place just for people to, to share what they're doing and the, the animals that are, th that are here. And plus, you have a wonderful environment for the animals that are actually already there looking for homes and a great way for them to find it. I forgot to tell you, we're also going to have a campground for kids so they can learn about nature and animals. We'll have a fire pit in the middle. They can do hot dogs, they can do marshmallows, and tell ghost stories. Just have fun. That would be fantastic. Where, where are you guys? A family park, more or less, but with animals. Animals, animals, animals. I love this idea. This is, I can't believe, you know, it really is needed. Unhomed animals. And it'd be great just for it. It'd be great for everyone involved. That's it. We want to help. We believe, we believe in help. That's what Quitters does. We help. <laughs> where, where are you guys planning to put this? And have you started any anything yet as far as building goes? We're still in the process of finding an animal person that's got land and can believe in what we're wanting to do. So you guys are. We're trying to keep it in Flagler because the jobs in this place will be 99% part-time work. But we will start part-time workers at it, a minimum of $12 an hour, until they get a handle of it, say three months, they're into $15 an hour for part-time work. So on top of everything else, it's also bring jobs to the community directly. Well-paying. Well-paying part-time jobs. Not like uh, Walmart and their minimum wage part-times. <laughs> Well, <laughs> this, this idea really does just sound better and better. So you're, you're looking for land in Flagler County right now, County. donations. part-time jobs in Flagler. And support local artists. Local artists. And to support the local yeah, artists. That's what we want to do too. And, and part will be food locker for individuals and animals. And a clothes closet for individuals that take care of animals, but they need a job, but they don't have anything to wear. We want them to be able to come get a set of clothes to go get a job. <laughs> this keep the animals out of a shelter or off the streets. Or keep dead on the side of the road. Keep the animals in good health out of the shelters and off the streets. And I see here it says solar energy everywhere, so will this place be self sufficient power wise as well? As possible, it will be self sufficient uh, monetarily and energy. That's just really incredible. If not only solar, we're going to turn it into a solar that operates uh, turbo. Because as an AC unit blows out air, it's going to blow out, turn the turbo generator so that one generator and one feed will do solar and uh, generate. I mean, exhaust. Yes. That's fantastic. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be completely self sufficient. So, okay, if. It's looking to be in five years. In five years? In five years. That's, that's if someone wants to make a donation or has land and maybe they're, they want to talk to you guys about how you could use it or how they could help, how would they get in touch with you? Uh, the, uh, we've got Facebook. We're at Critters1 on Facebook. We're critters.org on web page. That was, that was critters.org on the web page, K-R-I-T-T-E-R-S.org. And what, it was Critters1 on Facebook. Critters1. And how else? And uh, email, which is critters at bellsouth.net. Or phone numbers, which is now in the press release.
has both of our phone numbers in it. So yes, they, there's numerous ways that they can help us. And that's what we need. We need as much help and as many animal people that believe this is needed. And if someone were to help you, what are, what are the main types of help that you're looking for? Monetary. Land first, money next. But land first, money next. The money's not going to do us any good. Without the land money, money won't do any good. I imagine with, with such an incredible mission like this, someone's got to have a big heart. I know someone out there or a lot of people can get together and really help out. So critters.org. And what was the phone number one more time? 386-225-3358. Uh, All right, great. So everyone out there, get in touch with these guys and lend a hand to help. This is going to be one amazing project when it all comes to fruition. Well, th thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.